Hey, what's happening guys? Mark here from Mark's Aquatics. On, uh, on today's uh, episode, I thought we'd have a little chat about shop safety. You see me use a lot of tools in my videos. Um, Crosscut saws, you know, the mitre saw, the one that I pulled down. Um, obviously the Dremels. Um, Stanley knives, utility knives as you call them. All razor sharp blades and um, just want to have a little chat about those really because um, I've done a build which I'm going to put up tomorrow on a coconut hide which I've made and um, and I was using my circular saw and I, and I was looking back at the footage afterwards and I thought well people will try that and they're not used to saws they're going to they could well they possibly you know they could hurt themselves so um, so I'm just going to put this little short video together about uh, about the tools I've been, I've been using power tools for a lot of years and i'm very familiar with them and comfortable using them um but someone who's new to uh, making something like this and he wants to give it a go i think they should um if they don't know um what to do ask someone who does because these these uh, circular saws their blades are like razors and they're going so fast and they do not know the difference between bone flesh and wood and they'll just slice straight through it in a split second you'll lose your finger and um or worse and you, we don't want anyone getting hurt watching my videos trying to replicate what i do so um if you're a younger viewer make sure you go and see your mum and dad you know or if you're teenagers or whatever and you and you you know you, you want to learn and your dad's got a saw in the shed don't just go in there and use it please just go and ask him first for a bit of advice help you out and um but like I say, because we don't want any accidents. Utility knives are the same, they're razor sharp. Cutting wood, you've seen me carving the shrimps and different things. They're all very, very sharp. The sander's another one. You only have to touch that and it's uh, it's going so fast that it will just strip the flesh straight off your finger in a second down to the bone. And like I say, we don't want any anything nasty happening to, uh, to any of my subscribers. So, um, because I do love you all and I want you all to stay safe and keep all your fingers. So, uh, this is the only reason I'm saying this. Another thing I don't do, which I should do, is wear these chaps. I sh I've got them hanging up, and I should wear them, but I never do. Quick little thing, whack them on like that, job's done. Especially with cutting wood, things can fly out of the saw, and um, the saw sometimes as you're going through can snatch and grab, pull things out the saw and flick them up in the air, and the last thing you want is uh, a lump of timber hitting you in the eye, or... Um, or anything that you're cutting to be honest um, so yes be careful with your eyesight that's very important you can't watch my videos without eyes can you so and that goes for me as well that does go for me as well because I'm a fine culprit for that I'm, I'm, I'm always just getting on with things so uh, if you see me not wearing them in future videos drop me a message and tell me off and that will be appreciated anyway um, yeah the hide that I've built it's a new design that I've come I've come to uh, I've just thought up in the last couple of days I haven't seen it done before um, it gives good water flow through it um, and we'll put some different plants on the top as well and tidy it up and we'll drop it in the tank and um, uh, yeah and we'll see what it looks like and see if the little shrimps like it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sign off you're all fantastic I love you all you're all stars you know that all my subscribers, thank you very much for subscribing and sticking with me. Um, up to 69 now. Really chuffed with that. For the short period of time that I've been doing this. So uh, some of you guys must be liking what I'm doing. So uh, that's brilliant. That's really good. Um, and it just it just makes me want to make more videos, to be honest. And uh, help you out more with the drip acclimator, with the straws, stuff like that. Um, I'm full of weird and wonderful ideas. Like I say I've kept aquatics for and different things for my god probably 40 years and um i'm an ex-fisherman so uh been a, spent a lot of time at sea used to work the english channel catching crabs and lobsters and all that sort of stuff um i say i've bred rays i've kept everything from endlers to uh four foot alligator gar which i've had a few years back sadly i haven't got any footage of that chap but um 
he was a monster and I re, uh, rehomed him to uh, one of our zoos, a local zoo, uh, which took him on and put him in a big exhibit down there, which uh, I still see him now and again when I take my daughter down there to have a look, which is really nice to meet up with him again and dangle my fingers into the, uh, into the top of the pond <laughs> and uh, say hello to him. Right guys, as an alternative I thought I'd show you how to, uh, I've got the other half of this coconut hide which I knocked up yesterday. As you can see I put a series of holes around it that way to be different. Kind of looks like a crazy little beetle whizzing around doesn't it? I think what we'll do is, just to show you, I've just made a score across there like that. Now you sort of see me using the power tools in the video that I've just that you can see tomorrow. You can see the proper build tomorrow of the, um, of the other one I made and taking this one apart as well. But I just thought I'd show you on this one that you can, you don't need the uh, circular saws to uh, to make these things. I mean the step-in drill which is here which you'll see on the video tomorrow as well is an amazing little bit of kit. The way you just push it through a small hole it makes its own pilot hole I'll show you now how it works. Sorry, I'll get you in frame. Here you are, you see it's made a small hole there, but then as you push it through, it just steps up and the hole gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you get right to the top there. So you can have any size of those steps hole you want. It's for drilling through metal, I used it on my Land Rover to, uh, to fit a snorkel on it, so I can go underwater near enough. That's another story. Um, but yes, yeah, so as you push through, see? It just keeps cutting. And now we've got a hole that big. And so on. Until you get to a hole that big. So it's a very easy way to do it. Very possible for everybody to do it. Fine. Or you can use the old Dremels, or this one's a Parkside, little lithium battery in there, with uh, with a little cutting head on it. And you can basically just start that up. Be very careful. Safety glasses on, of course. There you go, and you just keep going through slowly, it's nowhere near as quick obviously as my big mitre saw, but in no time at all, just doing it slowly, and if this touches your finger it's not going to do a lot of damage, because it's a very small blade, this is actually a grinding blade, but you can get the ones with little teeth on, like little circular saws, which will go through this a lot quicker. I haven't actually got one to show you at the moment, but with a bit of patience. As you can see, it will cut through it. Oh, we had a bit of smoke coming off there, look at that. That smells good. Right, I'll leave it there, but that's you get the uh, you get what I'm getting at, and you can cut right through it like that. It's also a good way to score things if you're going to tie things on as well, because you can put the cotton in there, and it'll give it a grip, something to grip to. Or if you're going to put moss on, you can score it in different places, and um, I put a little bit of glue in each one, and just stick a bit of moss on. We can put some moss on this one, I think. But I think I will leave it whole. Like I say, it's going to look nicer as it is. Um, and like I say, you can use just your sandpaper for rubbing up the edges. Taking off any sharp edges like that you might have left. And um, yeah, I think we'll get some, I think we'll get a bit of moss and we'll wax some moss on there. Let's do it. Right, we're back. We've got some stuff. Got a bit of Java moss and some Java fern. Some string. Cotton and a bit of the old super glue. Just sticking it on. Okay. 
can grab some of this and poke it through the holes. I made some smaller holes there, see, on the top. I added a few more holes here with the step in bit, which I just showed you before. So you make smaller holes and you pick the right size piece of Java there, and that can go through. As you can see, goes through the bottom there. I won't even actually bother tying that on because I know it's going to root onto that, onto this wood of the coconut shell itself in no time at all. And the same goes for the Java moth. So I'm really going to put some very, very small pieces of um, of glue on there, little dabs, just to really stick it on to stop it getting blown around in the tank. Go. We get a nice, some nice bits of this. You don't want to put moss on too thick either. If you put it on too thick, it will uh, sometimes the underneath can rot. So if you just tease it apart and stick that down like that, you can see all right. I think we'll leave. I think we'll leave that one like that. To be honest. Just leave it go. We've got the holes through there. Like I said with the other video as well. On the one you'll see tomorrow. It's a different build tomorrow. Coconut again, but it's uh, it's a different shape. And we've just tried something a little bit different with that one, that's all. But yeah, this is very simple to do. I think it looks quite effective. Your little shrimps can zip in and out of these holes. Water flow is nice, you can go through. So you don't get stagnant areas in um, underneath them, which you do get with these little hides. You imagine that now that's sat on the on your uh, substrate on the floor in your aquarium on the uh, on the bottom of your tank, and it's solid with just one little arch here, which is what they've normally got in the the ones you can buy the big processed ones you can buy from the shop. The water goes, it can't get out anywhere, so uh, it, the water gets stagnant in there, food goes in there, fish could go in there and die and you wouldn't see it as much. Um, like I say, and the water flow can carry on going through and you don't have any stagnant areas where bacteria can build up and end up with any harmful nasties. Um, like I say, you don't want your ammonias going up, and nitrates going up, nitrites going up, because it will, it, it, especially in a small tank, in a bigger system you can get away with it, but... Um, a little bit more because of the volume of water but in a small nano tank if you want to keep shrimp and things like that I would suggest doing it this method where you keep uh, where you get the holes in it's a lot of fun to make them I enjoyed making these like I say I'll put the other video out tomorrow night um, at about seven o'clock again so you guys can follow that one as well but I'm using the power tools there as well but like I said in the video in the start of this video just be seriously super careful when you're using power tools because they you don't get a second chance with them okay and um, you really don't get a second chance. So I've known people that have lost uh, fingers and things over the years through power tools. And uh, they say that it happens very quickly. But enjoy yourselves. Don't let me do spooking you or anything like that with uh, using power tools. Always be confident when you're using them. That's half the trouble. Make sure anything you put in there is well clamped or pushed against either with another piece of, another piece of wood if you're cutting it or with something that you can grip hold of. And just uh, just be aware that these things can bite. Okay, they can bite you. Well, I've just got this last little bit of um, wood to sand up. Yay, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the first of April guys. Sorry about that if you jumped. Bit of ketchup. You can't beat a bit of Heinz. There you go. <laughs> April Fools. Have a lovely April, you lovely lot. And um I hope the sun's shining where you are. On that note, I'm gonna say yes. Uh, Goodbye, thanks for all the subscribers, you all stars. 
And if you're new to the channel, go back and have a look at some of the other videos. Please like, share and subscribe to all your friends if you do like them. Give them a thumbs up and all that stuff. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.